Welcome back, AP Calculus students. Mr. Record here, continuing our conversation about the chain rule. Uh, this is really the third video in this series, and uh, things start to get a little bit uh, different in this particular second day uh, of the chain rule. And the reason why is because we're going to talk about the, the ways that chain rules can be nested within product or quotient rules. Um, it's quite often that the more complex kinds of functions that you deal with might very well take this form. And uh, as I said here, it takes just a little bit more planning and organization to take the derivative correctly, but it's really not too bad. And you'll find out that there's a really special algebraic technique that, that's used, a special factoring that you can use to simplify the answers. So with that said, let's just jump into a few examples here and see if we can uh, help you out a little bit with this. Example four says to differentiate and simplify f of x equaling x squared uh, times the square root of one minus x squared. Well, the first thing that's extremely important uh, for one to understand is that uh, we are dealing with overall a special rule that you have probably talked about prior to the chain rule. And that rule is a product rule. This is a multiplication problem, x squared being multiplied by the radical. So you want to focus on this as a product rule. So if we take this derivative, f prime of x will equal. Well, we do our product rule. Uh, I like to do the product rule uh, version where I take the derivative of the first term and then multiply it by the second term. And now I'm going to suggest that we do something with this second term. Instead of writing it as a square root, <coughs> we are much better off writing it as a quantity with a fractional exponent. That's something that will never go away with calculus. Quite often, we'll take your radicals and rewrite them. And then the product rule says to add the original first term, x squared. And now we would multiply that by the derivative of the second term. That would be the derivative of the square root here. And that is where our chain rule comes into play. Now, you can see over here I've got that radical written uh, in fractional exponent form, so that might help us. We take this derivative using our general power rule, sort of our shortcut for the chain rule. We would notice that our 1 half comes out in front. And then we would multiply that by the 1 minus x squared, where it is now raised to 1 power less. Again, you've got fractions that you're going to have to subtract one from from time to time. So 1 half minus 1 is what's going to go here. 1 half minus 1 happens to be negative 1 half. And then you're not finished yet until you complete the chain rule. And that would be to multiply by the derivative of what is inside here. The derivative of 1 minus x squared is negative 2x. Now... Interestingly enough, this derivative is correct. Um, let's say that this was a free response type of question on an AP exam. You would get 100% credit for this. The problem is, is that oftentimes this would be presented in the multiple choice portion of the AP exam, and then it would also undergo a little bit more simplification. So it is very important that when you practice these problems that you do strive to simplify them uh, typically in, in the fashion that your, your textbook would do so, or the, uh, say the solutions that you could find in the back of your textbook. So what we're going to do is algebra from here on out. And I'm going to notice that this, this first piece here really doesn't have a whole lot going on with it. It doesn't really have any simplifying per se, but this second piece has a few things that we can take care of. So I'm going to suggest that we just rewrite this first piece. And then when we get to the second piece, we're going to notice, well, this plus, well, I think that's going to change because by the time we get down to this negative here, that would essentially turn this into a subtraction problem. And then we have a one-half fraction here multiplied by a two here that would essentially cancel each other out. And then, of course, the x squared term and the x term would produce an x cubed term. And then that would, of course be followed by the binomial 1 minus x squared raised to the negative half. Well, we've helped it a little bit. We certainly have. 
but we don't have that, that complete 100% simplified form yet. And that's mainly due to the fact that we have this negative exponent. And sometimes in mathematics, we don't like to see negative exponents hanging around our final answer. So the way that we can fix this um, is very simple. It's just a matter of performing a bit of a, a factorization, a greatest common type of factoring. So if you look at these two terms, we notice that this has a 2x in front, this has an x cubed in front, and it probably isn't very tough to see that you can factor out an x. But what might be a little tougher to see is the fact that you've got this term here, 1 minus x squared to the half, and this 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, and that also produces a, a common factor. Each of these has a 1 minus x squared with it. So that can pop out in front. We can produce a 1 minus x squared. Change the font there. 1 minus x squared. And then we decide upon which exponent that we would bring out. Well, your choices are a positive 1 half and a negative 1 half. Now, like with any other kind of factoring that you've done before, you're only going to be able to bring out the power that is the smaller of the two. Now, let's think back to this 2x and x cubed that we did a moment ago. We had an x to the first and an x, whoops, an x to the first, and we had an x to the third. Well, the one that's smaller is the one that ended up coming out. In that case, it would then be x to the first right here. We had a 1, we had a 3, we brought out an x to the first. Nothing is going to be any, it's, it's not going to be any different here. Nothing is going to change between the 1 half and the negative half. We'll bring out the one that is smaller, the negative half. And then we have a parenthesis that's going to then uh, begin uh, the, the, the uh, remainder portion of this particular expression. We've already brought out a 2x. I'm sorry, out of a 2x, we've already brought out an x. So we would be left with a 2. From a 1 minus x squared to the half, we've brought out a 1 minus x squared to the negative half. Sometimes this gets kind of tricky for students, but just think about it. Hmm, what exponent would go right here? Well, if we were to have distributed this term back in, if we multiply this back in, the rules say whenever you multiply like bases, you would have to add the exponents together. Well, what exponent would you add to negative one half to produce positive one half? Negative one half plus one would be positive half. And you'll find that that's a very common occurrence in the simplification of these particular derivatives. And the reason for that might stem from the fact that when you take a derivative, you end up reducing the exponent by one. All right, we finish this off. We remember we brought out an x from an x cubed term, so that would leave us with an x squared term. And then this 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half had already been completely factored out, so we can close off our parentheses and then just do a little bit more simplification, and we'll have it all finished up. So I'm going to take care of what's in the second grouping of parentheses here. Namely, I'm going to distribute the 2 through. finish up with this little x squared term. And then for some final simplification, we notice that these two terms here do combine. So I can take my x, and I'm going to skip this guy just for a moment, and write the x being multiplied by a 2 minus 3x squared. Again, we just combined these two terms. And the reason why I skipped this guy, as you can imagine, yep, he does have a negative exponent. So we could certainly drop him to the denominator and write him as 1 minus x squared. And it's really your choice. You could write him as a fractional exponent to the positive half, or you could also write him with a square root around him. And this would be uh, typically the, the desired simplified form of, of this particular derivative. And as a side note, that I, I know some students would look at this and think, well, wait, 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 no, the, this is not simplified because you have a square root in the denominator. But as you're going to find out, especially at the time you get into calculus and you take even more and more calculus, that the rule for simplifying radicals and denominators does sort of become a little bit overlooked and, and um, sort of it's uh, kind of gone by the wayside um, as you move into higher level math. 
So here's example four. <coughs> uh, hopefully that helps a little bit, and uh, in some future videos you can see some uh, other examples. Uh, in fact, I can show you here. I will be uh, taking the derivative of uh, uh, this function, f of x, in example five. In a future video, we'll, we'll use the quotient rule. And then example six, that's I go the right way, <laughs> example six is kind of an interesting problem in that there's a variety of ways that this one could be set up uh, before taking the derivative. So anyway, I hope uh, this helped with this example four, and good luck with your chain rule.